All I know is that this is going to be a very, very tough series uh, for the Dallas Mavericks. And I think that this is just a bad matchup. I think you talk about one of the more uh, dominant defensive groups in the entire association. That's what you're dealing with when you're dealing with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Let me just be clear. I was really wrong about how this series between the Dallas Mavericks and the Minnesota Timberwolves might play out. Very wrong about it. I really saw the Minnesota Timberwolves as a thorn in the Dallas Mavericks side. I said, hey, you know what? This is a team in Dallas that, albeit while they have two great players in Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic, I wasn't really impressed, impressed with the role players. I thought that the defense of prowess of the Minnesota Timberwolves would give them issues. I thought Anthony Edwards would show up big in this spot. And I'm not going to be one of those people to diminish what the Dallas Mavericks have done and say, oh, it's because they're young. It's because Ant Edwards is young. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hold him accountable. He talked a big game, didn't show up. That's fine. These things happen. But I want to talk a little bit more about the Dallas Mavericks and what they did. You see, one thing that I was a little bit remiss of is when they were facing the Minnesota Timberwolves during the season, it was before they completed this trade. They completed a trade where they acquired Daniel Gafford from the Washington Woods and P.J. Washington from the Charlotte Hornets. And let me be very clear with you. Those names don't jump off the page. P.J. Washington, not a name that jumps off the page. Daniel Gafford, not a name that jumps off the page. And then you got Derek Lively coming on, playing like one of the best rookie big men we've seen in quite some time. Hmm. I think when you look at the Dallas Mavericks, the trades that they made may have been under the radar, but make no mistake about it, the results have not been under the radar. They upgraded. They got better. They acquired players that would contribute and contribute often and be solid guys for them. This trade doesn't make any team, just any team in the association championship contenders, but it makes the Dallas Mavericks championship contenders. Why? Because it works for them. When you have a player like Luka Doncic who consistently makes the players around him better, and I don't want to disrespect Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is great in his own right. Kyrie Irving is great with or without Luka. Certainly having Luka alongside him helps. What I'm talking about those role players that he have, right? You talk about the, the uh, Daniel Gaffords, the P.J. Washingtons, the Derek Jones Jr., the Dante Exum. Those guys don't just go on a team and then become championship contenders because they acquire those guys. But when you have a guy like Luka Doncic who acquires so much attention, where defenses are literally collapsing on him when he has that ball in his hand because they're worried about what he might do. And in the midst of that, He's still able to get his own offense going, scoring 30 a night like he's done almost every single game of this series. But while also doing that, he's getting other players involved and getting the most out of them. Let's talk about what Luka Doncic is doing for these guys. You want to talk about what a franchise player looks like? You want to know why I made a video a couple months back where I said this guy should really be considered for the MVP? It's because look what Luka Doncic is able to do. Daniel Gafford, losing team on the Washington Wizards. Losing team on the Washington Wizards. Had games where he showed up and we're like, man, this guy could be special. P.J. Washington, losing team, Charlotte Hornets. Inconsistent three-point shooter. That was the tag he got. Comes on the Dallas Mavericks, contributes right away. Daniel Gafford, comes on the Dallas Mavericks, contributes right away. He had a, a streak where he wasn't missing a shot or missing free throws. I forgot which one it, it was exactly. But you get these players on the Dallas Mavericks that are able to just execute. That doesn't just happen by chance. Luka Doncic makes the players around him better. And not just better by a small margin. He makes them solid contributors. It's the reason why they have a real shot to hoist their first. When, I'm sorry, Luka Doncic has a, a shot to hoist, hoist his first NBA trophy this year. Because he gets the most out of those players. It's when you look at it, it's almost like it reminds me back when Jokic had Monte Morris and Willie Barton on his team, and he was still getting the most out of those guys. Now, obviously, they didn't really break through until Jamal Murray returned from his injury, but you look at it, kudos to the Mavericks front office. They built a team that 
you know, they get the, they literally built a team that gets the that Luka Doncic is able to get the most out of. They built a team that gets them that Luka Doncic is able to get the most out of. Not a bunch of flashy guys, guys that just are able to just do their job. And that's what I credit the Dallas Mavericks being championship contenders to. You see, some, that's something that I didn't give a lot of credit to. And that's my ignorance. The Dallas Mavericks are championship contenders because they play great team basketball. They're efficient with the ball. They don't like to turn the ball over. And it's because you got guys like Kyrie Irving. It's because you guys got you guys got like guys like Luka Doncic, who are able to make it work for them. So now the question becomes: Can you get the job done? If you like more video content like this, give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss when we go live or upload content from the in-home studio or the First Star Logistics Studio.